Hi, my name is Finidi George. Um, welcome to my exclusive interview on Tregong TV. We all grew up like uh, um, normal children uh, in a neighborhood that was quiet. Um, and um, yeah, actually, we just played street football. You know, and, um, I never knew how one day be uh, a top flight footballer. You know, it all started my my siblings. Uh, two of my siblings used to play football for Nigeria Najib Football Club and um, I think they came to pick them up and um, I just I told them can I join you for training that was how I went with them you know so I got there and they were like short of a player and then the coach told me can you just you know train with us today to you know to make up the number so that was how I joined them and I was like ah. after training the guy said this, you, you're good. Can you come another day and uh, join us for training? I said, okay. That was how everything started. So I started training and uh, before I knew it, they said they would give me a contract and uh, they started paying me. I was, still going to, I was still going to school. So that was how everything started, you know. And um, I knew it was, um, it was, going to be good because uh, after the Ajip, I was, I went to Sharks Football Club, you know, from Sharks, I went to Calabar Rovers and came back to Sharks and um, yeah, I took off and uh, I took off to Europe and um, yeah, that was when I knew this would pay off. It was great, it was great. Uh, actually, it was not easy, but um, yeah, I could, I could, you know, <laughs> fight my way into the team. Actually, I was signed to be, uh, to learn, you know, stayed there, because they gave me a two-year contract. Uh, I was never expected to, you know, break in so fast. And then somebody got injured and then, Vanga had to bring me into the team, and uh, from that day, you know, I played till I left. No, not really, but they, they had an, an history because Ajax had won the Champions League, but back in the 70s. So it's not a team that you say they are shy of winning a tournament like that. Um, we, we, yeah, it was a young team. And then we had uh, Rijkaard, uh, who came back from Milan. And then um, we played, we were just playing and uh, taking it one game at a time. And then uh, when we got to the quarterfinals, we were like, wow, it's like um, it's really going well. So we pushed a little bit harder and then uh, we got to the semifinals. And then, uh, you know, we said, yeah, we're almost there. And then. Uh, we got to the finals and I said, okay, let's see, you know, what's going to happen in the final. And uh, we played our football and uh, it was difficult though, but uh, we played our football and at the end of the day, we, we could win the cup. It was, really, it was really a great season, you know, but we never knew we were playing so well, you know, to, domin to dominate Europe. So, well, we're at the end of the day, we're, we're very, very happy, you know, with the way we played. Well, I was already there when he came, so I helped him, you know. We live in the same neighborhood. We, we, we ate our Nigerian food, you know, sometimes I cook, sometimes 
he cooked and uh, we just invite ourselves and you know, try to be brothers. You know? So it was a good, really good, we created a good bond between both of us and uh, we enjoyed our time over there. Uh, it was great, you know. I never knew I would, I would end up in, uh, after leaving Ajax, I never knew I would go to Spain and play for Real Betis. But um, it, all, it, all, it all went good. It all went good. I didn't regret any, any moment at all. Um, I went there, I enjoyed myself, played a lot of games, scored a lot of goals. Um, but yeah, Betis is not Ajax. So back then, Real Madrid, like, the, like always, uh, dominated the league. Real Madrid, um, Barcelona. So I had, I had fun and um, I had a good time in, in the south of Spain. Um, I started well uh, at Ipswich and I, and I broke. And I think the third or fourth game, I broke my chin bone, uh, and I was out for had an operation, and I was out for I think a month. When I came back, I started playing again, tried to be fit. Um, yeah, when I was fit again, and I, I left the team, I came to Nigeria for Nations Cup, and when I went back. The team was struggling, and um, yeah, there was nothing I could do. So the team, the team got relegated, and um, after that, it's history, you know, it's just problems, 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 problems. So at the end of the day, I had to go back to Spain. Amoriki has got terrific pace. Phil Amoriki now. Here's George. Oh! That's a terrific goal. Yeah, we knew if we could just play our football, try and defend very, very well, we have, we definitely have our own chances uh, to score because we we had an attacking team, you know. So we just felt, okay, if we could defend, let them not um, have the, so many chances to score uh, against us, then um, definitely we'll, we'll have our chances, you know. So that was what happened. So we started playing and uh, we just felt, wow, this one seems a little bit easier than what we thought, you know. So we just grabbed that opportunity and uh, we went for it. No, no, I will not say that because before that we had the, the era of uh, Christian Shuku, Odegbami and Mudalawa, Lit Mudalawa and others, you know, so Adoki Amesimaka. So that was another good era, you know. So we came up and uh, ours was different because that was the first World Cup and uh, that same year we won the Nations Cup and we were going to the World Cup. So a lot of hype about the team. You know, and then we went there, we did well, more than, more than what, was expected of, uh, what was expected of the team. So at the end of the day, that's why people said, ah, that was the best team, and, uh, because we took football at the highest level, you know? No, we knew uh, they, have, they had a very good team. But he was 
he was already at his, you know, he was not the Maradona of 1986. You know, so, yeah, we knew if we, we keep our cool, we could, we could have a good game against Argentina. So, we entered the game and um, we scored first, and uh, but you could see the, uh, the goal they scored against us was lack of concentration, you know. The goal Canigia scored was lack of concentration on our part, you know. So, but it was a very good game, good experience, you know, for, for Nigeria. You know, we that went for the World Cup, we, we did our best to represent Africa very well. And, um, you know, to today everybody talks about that uh, 19, 1994. Uh, World Cup score. Uh, nothing, nothing. Like, I didn't. It was not something that I thought about before the game. But you know, I was carried away. Scored a goal in the World Cup. You know, I just felt, wow, this is crazy. You know, so that was what I was. Yeah, I was just running, and I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? You know, I just. I was even surprised when I saw it later. I'm like, wow. This is what I did, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a World Cup, you know, uh, emotions, you know. You score a goal like that and uh, you try to celebrate it. Some people scream, some people jump, some people. I decided to, you know, uh, celebrate it that way and um, yeah, some people took offense. You know, that I was, you know, trying to mimic the dogs and you know, what all sort of nonsense and that. But, that was not my intention, you know. I did what I was supposed to do, sc score a goal and then uh, try to celebrate it, be happy with it. Um, ah, it was sad, you know, the, 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 the one we hosted here, it was sad because we felt we were going to win it, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, the 94 felt Felt very, very good after a very long time. 80, you know, and then 19, about 14 years after we won it, so it was really, really good. And the 2000 and the 2000, 2000, 2000 Nations Cup, where we lost. We did very well, but um, it was sad that we lost in our, our home ground in, uh, to Canada. You just have to accept it. You know. It doesn't really mean playing at home guarantees winning trophies. You know, uh, it happened. It happened that way. You just have to accept it. But it was sad. Though. Everything started in Mali. You know, the late uh, minister uh, came and uh, with a lot of uh, NFF or NFA members, and uh, they started criticizing the team before the game against uh, um, Senegal. You know, they were not playing well, we're not doing, there's no money. Uh, there's no money, and uh, we knew what government had approved, you know. So when they started complaining, we, Ulisse told them, we heard, uh, you're not paying us our bonuses, but we heard government has released money for you. Uh, or release money for the team. But we, we, we need to have it. You know? So, arguments and arguments. So, when we finally, uh, when we didn't win the cup, it was, you know, obvious that, uh, you know, a lot of people were angry and they would want to use that opportunity, you know, to, you know, put it aside or silence us. And um, that was what that was what they did. That was what they did. Uh, it was unfortunate, and um, but after you know struggling, playing all the games, if not all the games, you know, almost, and qualifying for the World Cup and not make it because of uh, sentiments, and I think. Uh, it was, it was really bad.
Thank you for watching my exclusive interview.